Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Wonderful New York City. You guys been to the, uh, the Tree and Rockefeller Center? Beautiful. Hi there. Welcome to A Night at the Movies with Phil Clarkus. It's our first episode. It's our Christmas special. Today we're going to be exploring the wonderful movie known as X-Men Apocalypse. Today I'm joined by our lovely guest, Thompson McGregor, a wonderful film critic from Brooklyn. How are you doing today, Thompson? Fine. So today we're going to be discussing... Who's... Who's he? Give me one of those. What's going on? What? Uh, are you in some kind of trouble? Yet. I'm today. just... I'm just hiding. If you don't mind, I'll just sit through this. It's okay. Well, do you like X-Men Apocalypse? Yes. Good afternoon. Back to the review. So today we're going to be discussing X-Men Apocalypse. Um, Thompson, what would you say, um, well, let's talk a little bit about the movie, um, about the theme. What is this movie about? The theme of X-Men Apocalypse is very complex. It's um, it's about family, and we see this from the very opening shot of a highly rendered CGI PS2 era graphic of ancient Egypt. And what's amazing about this is that in the background are rendered families, and that's telling us in, the, in our back of our subconscious that this film will be about family. Excellent. Um. What are you drinking? Coffee. Thanks. So what would you say the inciting incident of this film is? I would say that it is the wonderful scene in the first act where Moira McTaggart, a fellow uh, commonwealther like myself, she stumbles upon randomly this is the brilliance of this film. We're going to see a lot of random, incoherent things that don't really make sense in a narrative structure, but ultimately it's a part of the art that we're given. So Moira McTaggart stumbles upon the ancient crypt buried for over 3,000 years of En Sabanur, and just by moving some carpet to the side, she unleashes the sun rays Unleashing Apocalypse. It is one of the most brilliant inciting incidents, and it has to do with a the theme. Because Moira McTaggart has a family. That is the inciting incident of the film. I agree. Family is very important. I agree. Is your family here, sir? No. Coming to the characters, there's a lot of fantastic characters in this movie. Um, some that really stand out. I, I think you claim even some Oscar-worthy performances. Um, who are some characters that stood out to you and why? Well, speaking of Oscars, the number one performance in the film is by Olivia Munn's character of Psylocke. The use, well, I would say the, the misuse of her dialogue and, and the way they took it out of the film is actually showing how strong her character is. We don't need to hear what she's saying, because what she's saying won't matter ultimately. As in most female characters. And of course, Magneto. One of the greatest characters in all of film history. A man who has literally had a triple beat on his life. For the third time, he loses his family. And in doing so, he finds a family a beat that has been represented in all eight X-Men films. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I love, I love Metallica. Such a band. You said Magneto, right? Metallica. Death. Now, as powerful as some of these characters are, we see a uh, wonderful performance uh, by uh, Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse. I mean, compared to some of the greats, how, how, how does this character really stand out in this franchise? Oscar's choice in getting this role, he, he told me personally once, he said, you know, Thompson, I'm going to be the next Heath Ledger's Joker. And I think that he achieved that. I think he did. I think everyone will be talking about this. Why he didn't get the Oscar, just uh, <clears throat> 
it just, uh, it, uh, it upsets me deeply. It feels, for me, it, it's as a as a fan. It's it's the X Men movie that I've been waiting for. When you see all of them team up to take down somebody, it's a it's very rewarding. What do you think about uh, Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse? Apocalypse has so much ego, and it's very similar to another great American cinema character, Michael J. Scott from The Office. You watch The Office? No, I don't. Um, okay. There is a scene where Apocalypse builds his pyramid with thrones and statues for himself. He has so much ego. The same way Michael J. Scott has a cup that he bought for himself that says he's the world's best boss. I found it at Spencer Gifts. Excellent. Um, now let's switch to the topic of powers. Um, you know, powers really do something in this film, and, and we can kind of relate it to society. Uh, you had mentioned something about this. Did you want to elaborate on that? Traditionally, in the superhero genre, genre, as the French would say, of film, uh, you would have the, power, the powers correlate to some kind of social or political standing of the zeitgeist of the times. You'd want it to represent something. You'd want it to mean something. You'd want it to to symbolize something, but in this film, it all means nothing. Death. What's so daring about Apocalypse's character, we get one of the greatest powers ever represented in the superhero genre, and that is the ability to tailor clothing to personalized mutations. It baffles me. I mean, I watch this movie daily. Daily. It's the only film I have in my one-bedroom apartment, but I watch it daily, and sure, Iron Man has a powerful suit, and Thor has a hammer, and Captain America has a shield, and... But Apocalypse, he has every power, and his greatest is as a tailor. I have a question and, you know, both Thompson and our communist friend can answer. I just want to say that uh, I'm French and we're not communists. <sighs> what scene really stands out in this movie? The greatest scene of the film is Scott Summers, also known as Cyclops. Now Cyclops learns he has the ability to shoot optic lasers out of his eyes in school. Scott is then absconded with his brother to the Xavier Institute of Higher Learning in Westchester, New York by a rich benefactor the very next day. Do you know how long he had to wait? 18 hours almost. He was confused for 18 hours, blasting his whole school with optic beams. Who was going to help him? Charles Xavier. That's who goes to Westchester, and in the very first moment he meets him, he learns how to use his powers. He's given a pair of glasses that afternoon. Hank McCoy, Beast, makes him a pair of glasses that afternoon. What a hardship. He had to wait. Now you ask me what's the worst scene of him. Quicksilver scene. I just don't like Evan Peters, and I don't like the Aruthniks, and I I just think it's a bad scene. I don't know if you're aware, but I also can shoot laser beams from my eyes. There's a lot of controversy around the use of the F word. Um, to our Slavic friend, or French friend, sorry. Um, what do you feel about this? I think it was a good... Uh, uh -huh and very appropriate uh, moment to use the F-word uh, in such film. It's very powerful because he just turns and says, and who the f are you? I like it. It's very powerful. But what I also think that uh, one of the most powerful 
and appropriate scenes is when they travel to Auschwitz, the Poland, the camp, and they exploded to hell. I think it was very tasteful uh, and one of the most tasteful moments in film history ever. I agree. The Auschwitz scene is my second favorite scene. And it's oddly placed in the film. It's like the second act, but things are still building. And that's what the film does. It never has a second act, and that's another amazing thing, this film. It doesn't have a second act. It just has a problem, keeps introducing things that are random, and then it gets to the ending. And the Auschwitz scene, wow, so tactfully done. Never in a film have we seen something so tasteful. Destroying such a place that was such a blemish on society. Totally almost erasing the idea of it. I love 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 it too. I love it too. I love it. I love it too. Let's discuss the ending, gentlemen. Um, just to kind of put a nice little wrapped up bow on here. Um, you know, let's discuss the ending and how it affected the film. What, what stood out about this ending? It's just a big circle battle, you know? They're just gonna fight Apocalypse in a big circle battle. Nothing's really gonna happen. Oh look, Magneto changed his mind again. He makes the X. Who cares, right? We care. We are the audience. We want to see what we want to see. Think about that amazing shot of Olivia Munn. Her character goes full circle. Total arc. And she does that great Instagram flip. You know the one I'm talking about. I'm sure they'll put it up. Amazing moment. Amazing moment. Kind of says everything about family, everything about the film. Boom. The mystique has to appeal to Magneto once more. Repeating the same beat we've seen over and over and over because the film is reminding us, hey, go back, watch those other X-Men films. Those are great. Fantastic. Wonderful. Huge. Wonderful. Mystique then appeals to Magneto. And Evan Peters doesn't, even though he has every single chance at this moment to say, hey, I'm your son. Hopefully I won't die in the next film, so we won't repeat this beat but I'm sure they will. What a great ending. What a great ending. I mean, better than the Godfather's parallel action scene? I would say so. I also like um, Apocalypse is uh, Now, a movie. I've never seen this film. All right, so we want to go out. We have some wonderful fan notes to look at today. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, at Clara Broton says, hey, what the fuck, dude? And uh, at Hollywood Movie Press, they say, these guys are hacks. The fatter one works at Best Buy. I saw him there last Tuesday. Uh, at Matthew McConaughey says, oh, rad, oh, rad, oh, rad. Finally, a movie review show I can agree with. That's a great one. Uh, at Brian Singer says, really? After all those days on set, you betray me? Don't know who that is. Is he your friend? He was. At Tommy W says, Shame. Why, Lisa? Uh, at Gina Henson says, Which one is Phil? I think you should finally come meet your son. <laughs> we, can, we can skip that one. Um, at Matthew Smith says, Oh. Oh, wait, this, this isn't Charlie Rose. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. And the last one is, uh, At T. McGregor says, Amazing. Keep up the good fight. Hold on, at T. McGregor? I don't... Who could that be? Just a fan. Just a fan. Hold on, do you want me to prove that at T. McGregor is real? Because I'll prove it. That, 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 that's okay. I'll prove it. It's not me. Watch. <clears throat> oh, is this T. McGregor? Oh, Richard McGregor? You just go by T? Oh, <laughs> yes, you are a real person. Okay, good. Good. I'll tell him. T. McGregor. <sighs> Americans. 
Well, all right, folks. That's all for today. This has been A Night at the Movies with Phil Glorkus. We hope to see you next time. And we might do a wonderful review with you. <laughs>